without any further ado, uh, we are going to uh, kick it off. So I'm going to share my screen and get the presentation up. Uh, all right, you should all be able to, whoops, escape. It's always nice if I start it correctly. All right, all right, everyone, can you guys see that? Yep. All right, good. <clears throat> okay, this is an online reader's theater. Um, it's a how-to guide, um, and it is, uh, it's, 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 again, it's an impetus of everything that was created. Um, and what we did and how we got there and how easy, honestly, it is uh, because it is very easy to do. Um, and uh, we want to make sure that you guys feel the comfort and the ease of this. Um, we're going to go into, oops, there we go. all right. Uh, basic agenda is we're going to just do a quick introduction of just to who I am. So I'm not just some crazy guy speaking um, uh, and, and why we did this. Um, what was the impetus for it, and a basic outline of what we're doing and how to set up your own online class. And then we're going to end with a Q&A because I'm sure a lot of you have some uh, questions and answers. And okay. Br Brendan, if, uh, yep. if anyone wants to uh, participate in the Q&A, uh, just go ahead and click the uh, manage participant feature and raise your hand so that we know you have a question. Or if you're the shy type and you don't want to be on camera, uh, just type in your questions into the chat and um, I'll present them to Brendan at the very end on your behalf. So again, if you want to raise your hand in the raise your hand feature under manage participants in the bottom of Zoom, um, I'll see it on my end as the host and um, I'll send it over to Brendan. We'll call you at the very end for the Q&A. So if you have a question, just put up that hand in the, in the Zoom feature there. All right, back to Brendan. Cool. Thank you, Roy. All right. First of all, who am I? I am a playwright of Shakespeare for Kids books and uh, scripts and also classics for kids. Uh, I've been doing this since 2003 for so quite some time now. I've sold over 40,000 books and I have 25 different titles. Uh, you can see uh, one of the covers of uh, one of the titles over here, the melodramatic, funny, engaging 15, 25 minute uh, productions. And as of next week, I will have 26 as I'm publishing a new one, Tom Sawyer for Kids next week. Um, I'm also a teacher and a coach. I coach and teach uh, homeschool classes, after school classes, summer camps. I teach teachers how to integrate this into their classes. I teach them how to run their own drama program if they want to do this separately or after school. I also work with parents on how to do a backyard Shakespeare where they can do it with their own kids, a group of kids, camping, family reunions, and things like that. Lastly, I'm also a speaker. I'll be at uh, TETA this fall. Um, I'm also, I do speaking on how to publish books, marketing books, as well as I do in-class Shakespeare presentations. And I've also presented at Amazon, as you can see there. Um, why we did this. Uh, well, first of all, this is Roy's fault, so I'm blaming Roy. But we wanted to inspire other teachers and directors. It was really the goal here. Uh, we wanted to show, first of all, we wanted to see if it could be done and how it could be done and if it was going to be... Uh, fun to do and most importantly we really wanted something for the kids to do that was really important for us um, and honestly we were kind of bored being cooped up in our houses and we wanted to get out of our PJs maybe once a week so you know that's kind of one of the other reasons uh, what we learned and this is really a short short list and we'll talk about more what we learned but first of all it was a blast um, it was it was a lot of fun to do and it felt like an actual show we did a complete straight run through of it um, and we'll talk more about that in a bit. Um, and we still got to work on our same performance skills that we would do in typical uh, theater or drama productions. Um, but we also got to work on new skills and we'll talk about what some of those are. And it's, it's kind of important because it's really, it's really cool. And uh, you also get what's uh, instant video feedback, which is basically you see exactly what's happening. So you can start correcting on the fly as opposed to waiting for director notes and things like that. You can start self assessing, which is nice. Um, what do you need to do this? You need an internet connection, which you all have because you're here. You need access to Zoom, which again, you have. Uh, but you can do this with Google Hangouts. Um, you need to download an extension uh, to give the uh, Brady Bunch gallery view, um, but it can be done because I know some school districts, uh, they're not allowing Zoom, they're only using Google Hangouts. So that is something you can do. Um, the script, the scripts we used are playing with plays. Um, we knew the playwright. Uh, and uh, so we got to use that. Uh, Hamlet's one of our favorites. Um, costumes, props, 
and we'll talk about costumes and props. Um, not everybody has a uh, um, costume. Most kids don't have a costume uh, prop closet. So, um, and then a great attitude, just a lot of fun. As directors, it's about inspiring the kids. Um, our process, what we did for our presentation that you saw, we just did three one hour days. It really didn't take long. I pre, uh, I pre cast it. We did a read through on the first day. We did a dress rehearsal on the second day, and then we did show. Um, that was for us, but these are theater teachers used to doing plays. Um, if I had kids doing this, I would do a minimum of five one hour days. Um, Jerry, how long is your class? Ours is usually about a, an hour. We're do, gonna be doing eight by the time we film. Okay. Yeah, so. it can be, I, I would do a minimum of five. You can do as many as you want, whatever your session is. Um, you can do auditions on the first day or you can precast. It's, it's up to whatever you wanna do. Um, and you can do, uh, the second day I would do read through, some blocking. And yes, there is blocking when you're dealing with uh, mm -hmm. this little square. Um, uh, in dress with props, then do a dress rehearsal and then show. Um, and we'll go, we'll elaborate more on some of these in a bit. Um, lastly, this is a great feature. Um, Kevin, we spoke uh, last night about this, breakout rooms. Zoom has breakout rooms. So let's just scenario, you have 30 kids in a class. You can break them out into three 10 kid pods and each one can do a different play. Um, the nice part about Zoom in my plays, my plays are 15 to 25 minutes. Um, Zoom is about a 40 minute for a basic license. Some teachers, you can get a bypass on that and make it longer. Um, but uh, if you break this into 10, uh, three groups of 10, they can self-direct, self-cast, um, and they can actually self-assess each other when they perform for each other. It's a pretty cool feature. Performance, the question is on or off book. Uh, this is really up to you. Um, a true reader's theater is reading a script. Um, but I find with my kids that they may just read the script when they're with me. They won't rehearse it as thoroughly as I want them to, so the reactions won't be the same. So I'm, my class that I'm starting next week, they are going to be off book uh, because I want the true realistic reactions and to make more the feel of the live. But keep something in mind. These kids are going through a lot. They may be babysitting their own siblings at home during this time when their parents are at work. They may only have access to one computer. So, you know, it's your call, it's a judgment call and you do what's right for you. Um, and that's, you know, again, it's, it's your choice. And if you do this in five one hour days for one week, I'll guarantee you, and I've taught over 30 summer camps, um, you can do this and they can memorize their lines, give them their parts on Monday, they'll be memorized by Friday off book. So I've seen it week after week after week, so it can be done. Um, Showtime. Uh, we did not stop. It was the feel of a real show. We literally said two minutes to curtain, one minute to curtain, and then we started. Um, and we did this because we wanted the true feel of dress changes, props, where things are, to kind of give you that energy of like, we can't stop, we're going, we better know our stuff. Um, and that's important for that feel, that true drama feel, uh, production feel. Can you stop? Of course. It's your show, not mine. Um, you know, if, if my three-year-old busted in the back door, we probably would have done that scene again. Um, every once in a while, somebody's internet might drop out. I think in our three hours, we only had like two people drop out once and it wasn't once during our show. So again, it's your call, um, it's your show. Um, and off stage. So off stage or off screen over here, and coming back, knowing this is your stage and this is something you gotta work with. Um, if you see some of ours, you know, we would peep in from the side, maybe hide in the corner. Where's that corner there? Hide in the corner, you know, and just kind of like, oh, what's going on? And just, you know, play with the screen. You're just starting to work with the camera. You're actually playing to a camera as opposed to a theatrical stage. It's a different mindset. It's a different skill to work on. Um, and that's one of the things we do. Um, we covered our camera lenses, uh, but you know, since then we've learned we can just turn off our video and it'll, you can change your name from just your name to the character's name. And we'll show you a little bit about that later. Uh, but turning off the video or cover it, you know, and it's now blacked out. 
So either way, it's up to you and how you want to work it. Costumes and props. My biggest thing here is don't overthink it. Um, have fun with it. Um, this is this is where creativity comes in play. I love creativity. I love just thinking differently. And if something is funny, fun of it, that's make it more ridiculous is the fun of it and poke poke fun of it. If you see that picture in the bottom of Hamlet, he's holding a chicken. That is Yorick the skull. And usually he looks like that guy right there, but not him. He didn't have a skull laying around his house. Silly guy. Um, but he didn't have one. And what was great was the grave digger actually had a chicken like that at home. So she picked it up and she said her line about Yorick and then handed it off to him. And he just, you know, picked it up and said, oh, Yorick, I knew him. And he went on with his thing. Um, but we made fun of it because Horatio immediately said, ah, oh, he's looking a bit peckish, isn't he? And so we had a bunch of chicken do jokes that we played with there until we found one that we wanted to use. So that was fun. You know, add the humor. Um, again, keep it simple. Um, if you look at the Elizabethan collar of Laertes in your lower right, you know, that's just, that's just her, she put around her just to give it that feel. Um, and you notice their sword fight, um, soup spoons. That's part of the fun of it. So have fun with it, you know, make it ridiculous, make it fun. And then, you know, just play with it that way. Don't overthink it. Or our king, Mr. Jerry there, he, you know, fashioned a uh, crown out of duct tape. So have fun. Um, and then you can actually make a lesson. Roy, you want to talk about this? You brought this up yesterday. Uh, a lesson plan out of this? Uh, yeah. So um, one thing that you can do uh, specifically with this is that, you know, at least in my district, we are planning for, you know, all the way to the end of the school year. And so right now, I believe we're in week four of 10. So if you did it the way that Brendan mentioned, uh, you know, five different sessions, hour long sessions to get you to uh, your performance, that would gear you towards the end of the school year if you do one session a week. And what I like about this is that from a theater teacher perspective, right, I teach fifth and sixth grade theater in Texas is that I have something that we could do every week. Uh, we're putting together a show. And then it gives something for admin, for parents, for the district to see your work. It puts your program, your classes, pun intended, in the spotlight. Uh, so it could be a really great opportunity for you as an educator or, or someone who, who, who performs theater with their students uh, to, to, to build this into lessons during this crazy time we're dealing with. So just something to consider, uh, especially because right now us theater teachers are looking for resources all over the place. So just a thought that we had and how to utilize this and that structure that Brendan talked to you about. Yeah, and one of these lesson plans would be just, you know, creating your own costume for the week or finding the right props and creating those uh, for the week uh, off of this. Casting. You can do this ahead of time if you want. You know your kids. You know what they would do. Um, you may have already cast some for a specific play you were doing um, and just roll with that play. Um, or you can have online auditions, whatever way you normally do it. Um, cold reads or your typical auditions, whatever you do. Or you can do my crazy auditions, which is what I always do is melodramatic deaths. I always tell people, hey, in Shakespeare, people die. So let's see your best death. And kids love to melodramatically die on stage. Um, and it's great because if you see this picture, this is at the end of Hamlet and you can see all the dead bodies. And we specifically designed it so when they died, they had to stay within their square. We wanted to keep the body on stage. So, uh, and they were dead, but they were on stage and they had to stay. And poor Rosencrantz had to be there for like five minutes. And Guildenstern, she, she just she disappeared so but everybody else stayed right with it and uh it was a lot of fun um and with those kind of auditions which is great for camera and we'll talk about this in just a second um you can work on evil laughs um witches cackles the funniest on-screen face because one thing about doing a zoom is everybody's focused on this piece right here you don't have the rest of your body really to work with on stage you have your face. And I don't know about your kids, but my kids sometimes when they do facial expressions are kind of muted. And with a camera, since it's 80% of what they're looking at, that is the piece that you need to really pay attention and work on. So this is a great opportunity to really work on those facial expressions, whatever they may be. Um, and the nice part about having the feedback in front of you with the video is they can see that their face is a bit muted and they may have to bring it up a little. And that's great from a director's perspective to talk about it. You get live uh, feedback. 
And the other thing they can really work on is different voices. You know, if they want to work on that accent, work on something a little deeper, a little higher, they can work on different voices here because that's really, these are the two key things that you're dealing with in Zoom um, or online is those, those different aspects. And those are things that you can work on to make them educational moments. I mean, you can see uh, Fordenbrost right there, you know, with his uh, orange fedora and uh, the nice big smile that he's now the king. So um, the facial expressions are very critical in focused areas like this. Character identification. Um, so if you go back to there, you can see on this grid right here, I put names under each character. Um, it's relatively easy to do. I'm going to start a little talking a little technical here. Um, I did what's called a PNG file. Um, and I'll give you the basics of how to do that um, really quick. And if it's too technical, don't worry. There are other solutions. But a PNG file is just like a JPEG or a GIF. It's just a file format for a picture. Um, the difference is a PNG is what's called a transparent part of it. So I took a screenshot of the our actual screen and I dropped it in Adobe Illustrator. You can do it in Photoshop. Um, and then I just overlaid the names in the right places and then deleted the screenshot. Then I saved it as a PNG. You can also do this in PowerPoint if you don't even want to touch Adobe, which I don't blame you. Adobe can be a real pain. Um, but you can do this in and I'm going to just quickly show you, you can write it up, you can put it on here, and then you just go over to file, you go down to export, if you can see that, and when you export it, it'll come out, it's one of the choices here, file format PNG. The thing is about this one is when it comes out, it's not a transparent PNG. There, I've got a blog post about how to do these presentations, and in there's a link, that tells you, takes you to a place where it turns a PNG from a non-transparent to a transparent. You just use that and boom, it's done. Um, if this is all too technical for you, I understand, no worries. Um, what uh, Jerry, this is Jerry's Macbeth class that he's running mm -hmm. right now. And, and I, I think it's so great because um, uh, you can see the witches down below and they just change their name from like, you know, Samantha to witch. witch. You know, we don't know which witch is which but we know they're witches and that's great. And what else he did there, which is really cool, is you can see the background, there's different tartans. That's uh, Banquo on the right and Macbeth on the left. So he found out what their tartans were and he, you, in Zoom, you can save that file, upload it to Zoom and use it as a backdrop. Um, and so, and the kids, honestly, the kids have, they taught, Jerry, they taught uh, pretty much you everything about this, right? Right. Every time they'll be doing something I'm like, how did you change the name? And the kids tell me how to change the name. I didn't know how to do it. So there is a way, if you're the host, you can just go in to manage the uh, participants. It says more and you just hit more and you can just change the name right on the screen in two steps. It's really easy. Yeah, so it's perfect. And that's an easy way to do it to help the audience stay uh, understanding what character is what. Mm. Or you can even do name tags, you know, just have something hanging around your neck, you know, Romeo, <laughs> Juliet. Um, so whatever you want to do. Um, uh, scene changes. Um, so you can announce them uh, with entrances. So for example, you know, now presenting Midsummer Night's Dream, Act 1, Scene 1, enter Lysander, Demetrius, blah, blah, blah. You can do that. Um, I always do it with entrances so the kids, so my actors know that they're supposed to be on. Everybody else is blacked out at that time because we want people to focus on just those actors. Um, this can be done by a director or you can have a narrator, one of the kids. If they don't want to be on stage, they can just be the voice behind the screen and they can just do that. Um, and when you announce them, that's great for non post-production recordings, which I'll talk about in just a minute, uh, what that is. But um, I announced them to give everybody verbal cues. Uh, once we ended a scene, I announced act four, scene one through three, enter Claudius and Gertrude. And then, boom, they were on. And we just kept rolling that way all the way through. Um, or you can do post-production transitions, which is what you see in the lower right there. I wrote those. I cut my voice out and dropped mine in. I used iMovie. There's also Movie Maker. Those are both free. Um, iMovie is with the uh, Macintosh. Uh, Movie Maker is with uh, Microsoft. They're free software, and they're both very easy to use. And to be honest with you, the kids know how to use them. So don't be afraid. Don't have a technical aspect of this piece stop you, because the kids will help you. 
um, have a tech, have one of the kids be a tech. Some kids don't even want to be on stage, but they want to be behind the scenes. Have them be the tech guy or tech girl, a Foley artist, somebody to do all the sound effects. I know that like the Tempest would be awesome. You've got Caliban the monster, you've got thunder and lightning. You've got, there's so many things you can do there. Um, they can also be the editor. Uh, maybe they're good at art and they can actually draw your backdrops that the kids upload. And there's so many different educational opportunities here that we can work with using this type of production. Now, editing and post-production, this is the piece where I've gotten a lot of questions. Um, again, the first thing I wanna emphasize is you do not have to do this. You can basically, every, the feature, there's a record feature in Zoom. So as soon as it starts, you just hit record and it starts recording on your computer. Um, and you can just hit record, now presenting Julius Caesar, blah, 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 act one, scene one, enter Caesar. But you can do that and then do scene changes and then at the end, and then each everybody can applaud for each other as your bows and then that's it, cut. It'll download it into an MP4 format. MP4 is the most common video format. That is exactly what you would upload to YouTube or any online sharing program. So they make it super simple to share. And you can do that and not have any post-production. Um, if you do put it on like something on YouTube, I wanna make sure we emphasize this, make sure you have media releases, you have permission to do this in writing. Um, it's very important, most schools, they don't want their kids out there. I respect that. Um, and so if you do upload it, do not make it public, make it uh, unlisted where you can just share it with the family and friends. And uh, just, I just wanna emphasize that point, it's very important. And then uh, why you should do this, you know, um, because it's an opportunity, give it to a student, have them do it. I did it myself because I just wanted to do more and I loved it and it was just a blast to do, but give it to a student, they would love it. Um, it's again, it's an educational opportunity we have here and it's fun and it's a real life skill. I mean, not only in like movies or TV or whatever, doing video edits, everything nowadays, social media wise, companies all over the place have video. They need video editors. So it is a life skill that they will need, um, that they can use and move forward with. Licensing. Um, licensing, you know, the works you use are mostly copyrighted protected, uh, copyright protected. So you do have to get permission. Um, contact the playwright, the publishing company, um, and make sure you get that permission for whatever performance you do. Uh, we used Hamlet for kids by playing with plays. We knew me, so that made it easy. Um, but, you know, and if you're interested in using my plays, um, I'll gladly, you know, let me know which play you want to see and I'll gladly send you a perusal copy. Um, for me, it's a per copy license that I send out to each kid. Um, and it's only $2 per script. Um, and they're digital uh, script. I'll show you what they look like in just a minute. Um, and because these are educational purposes, there's no performance license uh, with my performances. Uh, because that you're using them strictly for education, for family and friends, unless you are using this to generate funds somehow, including YouTube advertising or whatever fun way, if you're trying to raise some kind of funds with it, then yes, there is going to be a performance license and just contact me about that. Or unless it's using my full length play, I do have one 90 minute play. It's uh, Shakespeare's Hilarious Tragedies, uh, inspired by my friend Amy. Um, and it is the one that there is a license and there's a different script charge uh, for that one. And it's really designed more for theater houses, uh, upper middle school and high school uh, students. So this is what it would look like when you receive one of the script. So you would have the script on one side. I had the gallery on the other side so I could still see my reactions, but I was also reading along in the scripts. It's all online. Um, so I don't have to print it out or anything. And for those of you who don't know my scripts, anything you see highlighted in gray is actual Shakespeare text. Everything else is me being funny. Um, and each of my plays have three versions, a small, medium, large for different cast sizes. Um, and that's basically it for that. And then if you need, if you have questions after the fact that you want to know and learn about, you can just contact me. Um, that's my website. You all received my email. Uh, so just respond to that. Um, oh, April 23rd is Shakespeare's birthday, death day. And I've donned it, uh, insult like Shakespeare. Uh, so go to insultlikeshakespeare.com and do an insult-a-thon with your kids. They will love this. It is a blast. I go into schools all the time and do this. And basically you line up kids on both sides. They practice their own insults and they pair off against each other until there's one finalist and they win. Usually they win a Yorick skull. 
So it's a, it's a pretty cool prize. Um, but it's a lot of fun to do. Um, and you know, they have talk like a pirate day. Why not insult like Shakespeare day? And it's a great way to have fun with Shakespeare and get them excited about Shakespeare. And that's my email. Um, I want to leave you with this. I try, I talked a little fast because I wanted to make sure I didn't take too much of your time today. Everybody's busy. Um, but nothing will come of nothing. I mean, if it's King Lair, if you do nothing, nothing will happen. Nothing will change, but just try. Even if this is just, you are just putting the kids together and they're self-directing and you're just monitoring from the side. Great. They've tried, they've done something. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's going to be fun and they're going to love it and they're going to remember it. Um, and it's, it, again, you know, like Roy said, this is something tangible that you can present to your admins, uh, to parents to show, you know, this is our work. This is, this is their art, their craft. And as we all know with drama, there's so much powerful tools that they learn from theater, from drama. Um, that's about it. Um, you contact me with any questions, but let's do a little Q and A if we have any questions. Um, Roy. Okay, so if you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand. I'll unmute you if you want to talk to Brendan directly, or you're welcome to send it to me in the chat, and I'll uh, read it out if you're more of the shy type. Uh, we just had a couple of messages during the presentation, but Brendan, you answered them about uh, royalties for your show. I and you, and you already mentioned the answer of contacting you uh, mm -hmm. for royalties. No, and if anybody, and I've said this once, if anybody wants to see a perusal of any of the plays, send me an email, tell me which play, I'll send you a copy of it. Um, as well as the full length play as well, if you think about that one too. All right, we have a question from Abigail Keene. I'm gonna unmute her. Abigail, go ahead. Uh, hi, um, so I've not seen any of your works before, but I'm on the theater resource group that um, came up with this workshop. And okay. I just two days ago have put it out that we'll be doing our spring play via this kind of style instead mm -hmm. of what would have been mounted on our stage. Um, sure. I'm having trouble kind of convincing some of my cast members, like this is still going to be cool. Um, do you guys have links or resources that I could use as a sample just so that my students can see like, this won't be our full show we had planned for, but this is still worth our time. Um, right. Um, well, a couple things. One, I mean, if you want me to talk to them directly, I can. Uh, okay. Two, show them our Hamlet. You, have you seen our Hamlet? I didn't. And that's why I was wondering, is that okay. listed somewhere, even for a five minute clip? Yeah, no, no, it's, it's, it's on YouTube, um, but okay. I will send, what I'll do is I'll send a, a link out to everybody after this because we're going to record this, but I'll send it before that um, so you can actually see, uh, see it. And I know Jerry posted a small clip of his Macbeth. Mm -hmm. um, Jerry, okay. you okay Great. if I share that? Yeah, sure. Okay. That should be going up next week, so. Okay, cool. Perfect. Cool. Okay. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it was, it was honestly, it was, a, it was a blast to do. And it was surprising. I was, I had a little bit of jitters before and, you know, <laughs> I'm the kind of, that I'm like, oh, I love these jitters. I just, you know, I start getting that energy. And so I wanted to, and it was fun, you know, right before we went on to do this. So uh, yeah, you'll, you'll still get though. I mean, you're right. It's not the same as being on stage, but right. it's still going to be cool. And you might even just want to start with like, if you have a lot of resistance, start with like a four or five that, or maybe a small group that want to do it, mm -hmm. do a short, do two scenes and just run that out there and say, hey, uh, this is what we did. What did you guys think? And that might inspire other kids. Um, yeah. So that might be another opportunity, another my, option as well. My first one, I just, I'm doing like an after school program. So I picked the kids that would want to do it so that hopefully I can show it to the other kids and get them excited. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Sure, thank you for your question. question. Miriam, Miriam Sass has a question. Miriam, go ahead. Hi. Hi. Um, my question is, so I would like to use this format with Wiley and the Hairy Man. Um, it was our competition piece this year. It's a great I have show. High it great is, show. it is. Um, and um, so it was our competition piece, but we never got to perform it for the greater community. Um, our first performance was competition. And we really want to show the community this performance. Um, but I've noticed though, um, so with my chorus, um, and I guess this is more of a technical issue, um, with the kids all speaking at the same time with their internet connections, sometimes there is like lag in between um, the different chorus members with, the inter with their internet connection. And so the chorus, which should sound a little bit more um, in sync with one another, they often don't and it just, it's kind of disruptive, so I'm not sure like how to get around that. 
You know, that's honestly, it's a tough one. Um, if you record it straight, so there's, in my mind, I would do one of two things. I would just record it straight and it is what it is. I mean, you're doing the best mm -hmm. with what you got. Yeah. Uh, or two, you can actually have them record it separate audio files and then you can, and this is the technical piece, you can go after the fact, line up the audio files and then you can actually coordinate and line them up um, in iMovie or an in some kind of audio program, maybe like a garage band, and you can line them up and then just have that snippet and then take that piece and then drop it in your, overlay it into the piece. Okay. Um, it's kind of it's kind of cheating. I mean, I see these productions. I don't know if any of you guys watch the SGN Good News yeah. Network, and they did Hamilton, and I was like, that was awesome, and I was in tears. I was crying, but yeah. I was like, how the heck did you get everybody? doing this perfect so you know they're they're much more technically advanced than we are mm -hmm. but these are just you know they have some kind of editor in the background and so i would do something like that with overlaying their voices and dropping them in um, okay maybe it's on a phone call or something separate so it's just and this is kind of like have ask the kids too the kids yeah. might know ways to do this that we don't i mean i know kids that just spend hours on youtube figuring things out yeah so they might know stuff that we don't okay all right thank you sure good luck Thanks. All right, Brendan. So we've got uh, Denise. Denise has a question. Mm -hmm. Denise, go ahead. Hi. Um, I just was wondering, do you ever, have you ever explored with doing this live? Because I saw that, that you can um, like mute, like take everybody, like if you have an audience, come on to Zoom. Have you, mm -hmm. you tried something like that? I have not done the live one yet. Uh, you do need to upgrade. Uh, we, we learned that yesterday. You do need to upgrade to do a live uh, show. Um, and the only thing you play a risk at is if any uh, internet issues drop in and out. Um, and, and, you know, it, it may happen. Uh, but, yeah, you can do that. You absolutely can do that. But keep one thing in mind. If you go live, you know, make sure you have your media releases because, you know, that's going out to, you know, Joe Q Public. So. Okay. I just didn't know because I was th thinking about it. But I was wondering if you guys had already tried it and you were like, oh, no, don't do it. It, it failed. But okay. Thank you. No, no. We, we thought about it. We talked about it, but we wanted to. I mean, part of it was. Oh, it's easy. Like you can pick a how many you need. You don't have a date, but you have to perform. And then when you are going to record, yeah, for me. So yeah, I don't. But there are some questions from in the chat. So when we recorded it, whoever's screen is recording it is the one. Um, and once you get that recording, then I can take a screenshot of that and drop it into the software, and then do the overlay. Um, I can't do an overlay during like a live production or things like that. That's when you have to change the names, uh, such as Jerry did with the Macbeth. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's, it's typically that way. One other thing that we talked about is uh, whoever is recording it, you may want to send a screenshot of what they see because we had it, and you can see it in our video, is we might be looking this way at somebody, but in reality on their screen, they were on this side. So. <laughs> We miss that. Um, if we know where they are on their recording screen, that'll help us uh, triangulate when we look at people and you can do more like kind of the Brady Bunch thing and look up and look down and you can add more um, texture to your performance. Deborah also asked, Brendan, uh, what was the tool that you used basically to do the split screen, I believe is what she's asking here. What was the tool used that showed the script scrolling as the actors acted? So if you had oh, a specific... Yeah, or that what you wasn't a tool at all. That was just um, so in Winter Mac, you have your screen. You can just grab the edge of the screen and you can move it uh, mm -hmm. left and right. And so I just toggled them when they were one was slightly behind the other. Um, and then I, all I did was just move them so they're a little thinner 
And so I basically had two screens next to each other. And I had and an so iPad on my screen and I just put it right, uh, you know, on the left or right side, depending on where the, the screens were, were setting for all the other actors. And I had my iPad just kind of balanced and I was able to, it's like, I'm swiping right now. You can't really tell that I'm swiping very much. And so that's how I did mine because Hamlet has a lot of lines. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to need some help here. And that was, that was super easy to do. Yeah. Welcome back, Roy. Hey, sorry. I hope the recording's okay. <laughs> we'll see. All right. What, what's the next question, Amy? Uh, it keeps moving. <laughs> it's a good problem. Yeah, right. Uh, let's see. Is there a way I may get a link to this recording? Yes, I believe you shared. You're going to be... Oh, for this, for this uh, recording. Yes, you'll be sending that out. Correct, Brendan? Correct. Yeah. It may Perfect. be a day or so because we're going to upload it and i literally live in the middle of a forest so my internet's the worst out of all of us so um it may be a, a day or so but yeah it'll be up it'll be up uh, pretty quick awesome jess has a question she asks um we are planning to have a group of students help with editing and post-production do you have any suggestions for sharing files during this process uh you can use google drive um we um it, it, it ooh, that's a good question um i have a lot of my yeah. Oh, I have a lot of my files on Box, um, and I just share links as opposed to emailing the files because they could be quite large. Um, and honestly, when this thing we filmed for about 45, 50 minutes was our final production. When it was done, it was 455 megabytes, which for a video is not really that big for that length of time. Um, it's pretty small. Um, it got bigger as I started adding stuff in post-production, um, but on the most part, it was pretty small. And so it became easier to transfer, but you can't email it. You will have to put it on uh, some kind of uh, cloud file sharing device. Jerry, Roy, Amy, Amy, you're the tech guru. What do you say? <laughs> Please. <laughs> no, I mean, that all sounds great. And quite honestly, exactly what you've been talking about. I would, I would have a child <laughs> figure this out for me because it also depends on uh, what they're working with. So here, I'll put my video on real quick if you want to see me talk. Uh, but for myself, I can't record Zoom meetings if we were to do this with my students. Uh, and that's because I'm working from a Pixel book. And so Chrome doesn't have access to record using Zoom. So I am going to be dependent upon one of my students to go ahead and record whether they have some type of PC and or Mac at home uh, because again I don't have those capabilities so you know it's just it's working together it's collaborating as a team and like Amy said if you're in a situation where like Amy you know you don't have that capability in zoom as the host you can send recording privileges to someone else so if I wanted to give it to Jerry I could say Jerry you have recording privileges click 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 and then at the end of the zoom meeting it'll automatically download on Jerry's side mm. and he can get the recording. So that's one great way to do it. Like Brendan said, empower the kids, give them that, give them that duty. Cause there'll be some kids and we know some kids just don't want to be on screen. Don't want to be in front of the camera. Let them embrace that tech work. Like the, I'm sure mm. some get a high off doing something like this. So give them that great opportunity and let them showcase their skills. What a great way to do it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, passing off, we made sure to pass off the recording to whoever had the best internet. Um, because we wanted to make sure it recorded well. What's the next question we got here? Uh, Ginger, I don't. Um, if you're still here, she says she has a question. She wasn't sure how to raise her hand, and I, I'm here. Good. Okay, good, good, good. Yay! It's sad Hi, Ginger. I, I tell my students all the time, raise your hand if you have a question, and I never figured out how to do it. So now I actually know how to do it. Okay. Uh, I teach middle school seven, eight, nine at a junior high school in northern British Columbia in Canada. Uh, we were slated to go up the beginning of May to do Newsies. We were off book, we were ready to go, so I'm kind of bummed. We don't get to do it. I am now tackling doing something with our show through this, so thank you. But what I learned last night was something called a clap track. So if you want to pre, pre the question was asked earlier and I wanted to answer it. So my kids with rehearse score, so I'm talking music here, but that's because it's what I know. Uh, my kids got, um, I gave them the music and at the beginning of their recording, if they clap, so if you're doing this as a recording, not live, if they clap, then you line up in the recording, all those claps, because that sound is something you can physically see on the monitor, right? 
So if you line up all those things and then they have their earbuds in and they're listening to a timing like a metronome or something, like they're listening to music in a metronome for me, uh, you can do your show and it should be all timed. And if you line up that clap, it's, it's going to work in the recording for the music part of it. And I think it would work for a group scene too. Yeah, no, that I, it's so basically, you know, to kind of reiterate what you're saying is the audio tracks, the audio tracks are shown as just dips and valleys uh, when you actually physically look at them. And I'm trying to bring one up right now so I can kind of share the screen and show you guys what it looks like so you, you get more of a visual of what this is. But if there's a lull in talking, you will see a dip in the line. And that dip in the line, you'll hear someone talk and you'll know exactly where to cut it and where not to cut in. So let me quickly share my screen and I'll show you what Georgia was talking about. Thank you, Georgia, it's, it's brilliant. Um, this is iMovie, uh, this is the file, but if you look towards the bottom here, you can see kind of these dips and valleys, that's audio. And that audio, you can see whenever there's breaks in there. And let me spread it out a little bit more. Um, and then you can see, you can see bigger gaps here. Nobody's talking at that point and then suddenly somebody's talking. So when you want to go in, you can just go in, you can clip it, you can split a clip right there and you can take out or put in points or you can start aligning the audio tracks. Um, and the audio, let's see, do I have an audio in here? Yeah, so in the very, uh, I might've moved that too fast, but um, in the very beginning, if you watch our Hamlet, we did just kind of a, a um, silent movie music kind of thing we kind of wanted to throw in there. Uh, but you can see all the audio down below and that's an actual audio track. So you can take those audio tracks and all you do is you just start lining them up. So all of the uh, highlights all line up the same and then it'll overlap appropriately. That's what she was getting to. Thank you, thank you very much for that. What do we got next? I don't see any additional questions in the chat. So okay. if anybody else wants to raise their hand or jump in maybe. And I answered some in the chat before I disconnected. So I privately messaged them back. Um, but yes, Brendan will be sharing out um, uh, slides, hopefully too, Brendan, can we get slides too, along with sure. uh, the link to Hamlet? And then uh, assuming things are okay on my end, we'll send the recording out. This is recording, so I have faith in you. All right, and if you have any questions you think of later, just shoot me an email um, and we'll uh, give you an answer the best we can. And again, you know, your kids are probably going to be your best resource mm -hmm. on any technical pieces because they will honestly know more than we will. And we all know that. So um, if there's nothing else, I see three things in chat. Um, is that it? Thanks. It's okay, cool. Um, but uh, that's it. Just let me know. Um, have a great day, Roy. Thank you so much for setting this up. Um, Amy, Jerry, thank you for chiming in. Thank you. And, uh, guys, <laughs> have a great day, and uh, we'll see you on the stage. Yes. Bye. Break a leg. <laughs>